Shalom, brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. Today to all our listeners. Welcome to Lectora Talks, or Let the Word of God Speak. Today is the fourth part of the series, End Times, The Rapture of the Church and the Second Coming of Jesus. May the love and the presence of our Lord and our Master Yahshua Mashiach surround us. Ruach HaMes, please reveal yourself to us and guide us in your truth. Thank you, Abba, our Heavenly Father, for the opportunity to enter into your presence. Through the blood of Yahshua we come. Let's briefly talk about the second coming of Jesus. Why do you think Yahshua will come back or will come again for the second time. Here are some answers that do not have any scriptural support. I believe that you know that word will describe word and that there will be more than one verse to confirm a viewpoint. Matthew 18, verse 16. But if he does not hear, take with you one or two more, that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word might be established. And God does exactly the same. If we have no scriptural support or scriptural truth or verses to confirm a viewpoint that is a revelation. And a revelation could be from God or it could be from the devil. For example, if there is a teaching, revelation, proclaiming that we will live in spaceships for the seven year tribulation period, and there are a scripture proclaiming that God will protect the believers during the great tribulation. Which one is from God? The written word, of course. Here are some views about the second coming of Jesus. He came to take us to heaven to live with him forever. Because we are so good, and by the grace of God, Jesus will take us with him, and we will marry him and have honeymoon during the seven-year tribulation period while the other Christians and the unbelievers suffer on earth. Another viewpoint, Jesus will take us to heaven because he will destroy the whole earth. None of the above is written in the Bible that are mostly used today. Scriptures, King James Version, NIV, none of these are written in the Bible, the Word of God that we use today. I do not know about Bibles that will be published tomorrow. What does the Bible say? Why is Yahshua coming back? And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And according to his practice, he went into the congregation on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And the scroll of the prophet Yeshua, Josiah, was handed to him. And having unrolled the scroll, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of Yahweh is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to send away crossed ones, with a release, verse 19, to proclaim the acceptable year of Yahweh. 
Did Yahshua read the whole scripture, the whole prophecy? No, he stopped in the middle of a sentence. Verse 20, and having rolled up the scroll, he gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the congregation were fixed on him. Why? Because he stopped in the middle of a sentence. They all were waiting for him to do something, to say something, because he didn't read the whole prophecy. Verse 21. And he began to say to them, Today, the scripture has been fulfilled in your year. Let's read that part to find out why Jesus stopped. So let's go to the prophet himself, Isaiah 61 from verse 1. The spirit of the master, Yahweh, is upon me because Yahweh has anointed me to bring good news to the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim release to the captives, and the opening of the prisons to those who are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of Yahweh. Till year Yahshua read, and then he rolled up the scroll. The prophecy, however, continued. And the day of vengeance of Elohim, to comfort all who mourn, to appoint unto those who mourn in Zion, to give them embellishment for ashes the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, and they shall be called trees of righteousness, a planting of Yahweh to be adorned. If Jesus read the whole prophecy, he could not have spoken the words that today this prophecy came into being while we were hearing this prophecy. And they shall rebuild the old ruins, raise up the former wastes, and they shall restore the ruined cities, the waste of many generations. This part of the prophecy, the first part that Yahshua read, said that he himself came to be a prophet and a priest. Do we have scripture that testified to this? Matthew 11, verse 8. But what did you go out to see? A man dressed in soft garments? Look, those are in the houses of the sovereigns. But what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yeah, I say to you, and more than a prophet. So Yahshua himself proclaimed he is the prophet. In Hebrew 5, verse 10, having been designated by Elohim, a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. So, Yahshua himself performed the role of a high priest, of priest and of prophet. The other two offices, that is in the rest of the prophecy that Jesus did not read to them, will be fulfilled when he come back the second time and the last one will be a thousand years later. The other two offices is then king and judge. What about a king? John 18, 33. Then Pilate went back into the palace and called Yahshua and said to him, are you the king? Are you the sovereign of Judaim? So he asked Jesus, Are you the king? Answered he. Do you say this from yourself, or did others talk to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Judite? Your own nation and the chief priests have re delivered you to me. What did you do? Yahshua answered, my reign is not of this world. So Yahshua never proclaimed 
that he's the king of Jerusalem or the king of Israel or the king of the Jews or the king of the whole world. He said, my reign is not of this world. So when he comes back the second time, he will take up that responsibility. He will fulfill that prophecy and that role as king. My servants would fight so that I should not be delivered to the Yudaim. But now my reign is not from here. So when they had come together, they asked him, Act 1 verse 6, saying, Master, would you at this time restore the reign of Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know the time or the season which the Father has put in his own authority. So they know he must be king. And they ask him, is it now the time to restore the reign of Israel, to be king of Israel? And he said, it's not for us to know now, but it's only the Father in heaven. By his authority, he will appoint Yahshua as king. So what will happen during the second coming? Revelation 19, verse 13. And having been dressed in a robe dripped in blood, and his name is called the Word of Yahweh, and the armies in the heaven dressed in fine linen, white and clean, follow him on white horses, and out of his mouth go a sharp sword, that with it he would smite the nations, and he shall shepherd them with a rod of iron, and he threads the winepress of the furnace and the wrath of El Shaddai. Verse 16, and on his rope and on his thigh he has a name written, Sovereign of Sovereign, King of Kings, and Master of Masters, Lord of Lords. So now he come back as King. Blessed and set apart one shall reign with him a thousand years. If you read Revelation 20 verses 4 to 6. And after the thousand year reign of Jesus on this earth, it will be time for the final judgment or the white throne judgment. It is clear that believers will not live in heaven as part of the second coming. God is coming to the earth to live with us. We shall reign with him for a thousand years. After that, we do not know. The Bible is silent. Revelation 21 verse 3. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, See, the book, the tabernacle, the dwelling place of Elohim is with men, and he shall dwell with them, and they shall be his or and um, Elohim himself shall be with them and be there. Elohim. Revelation 20, 11, And I saw a great white throne and him who was sitting on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before the throne, and the books were opened, and another book were opened which is the book of life, and the dead were judged from what is written in the books according to their works. So works is very important. Works will give you everlasting life. Your works will not save you. By the grace of God and the blood of Yahshua Messiah, we are saved if we believe in him and in the crucifixion and in the resurrection then we are saved, but our works are important. Verse 30, And the sea gave up the dead who were in it, and the dead and the grave gave up the dead who were in them, and they were judged, each one according to his works. But what about the wedding and the honeymoon? Really? Are you sure it is? Do you know one verse in the Bible that say that we 
Christians, believers in Jesus, in Yahshua, are the bride of Christ. Remember, there must be at least two verses in the Bible that I use. There is not even one verse. Not in the King James, not in the Scriptures. Who is the bride of the Messiah of Christ? Let's call John as a witness. He saw the bride and he did not rejoice by saying, Hallelujah, I am the bride. He did not. Revelation 21 verses 9 and 10. And one of the seven messengers who held the seven bowls filled with the seven last plague came to me and spoke with me saying, Come, I shall show you the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the great city, the set apart Jerusalem, descending out of the heaven from Yahweh. So John saw the bride that he saw that was showing to him is Jerusalem. Not the church, not believers, a city. If believers in Jesus were the bride. What is the criteria? If it is our faith, then the apostles surely would have qualified. If it is grace, then they will also be the bride. What did the bridegroom, Yahshua himself, say about this? Matthew 9, verse 14. Then the thought ones of Yohanan, John the Baptist, came to him saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast often, but your thought ones do not fast? And Yahshua said to them, Are the friends of the bridegroom able to mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the day shall come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they shall fast. Jesus said to the believers, or he said to the people came to him that the believers, the apostles, are friends or are guests of the bridegroom and of the bride's chamber. What does the King James Version say? Can the children of the bride chamber mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? The children of the bride. What does Paul say? Galatians 4.26 But Jerusalem above is free, which is the mother of us all. If Jerusalem is the bride, and we are the children of the bride's chamber, or the children of the bride, Paul said Jerusalem is our mother. Three witnesses stating that we are the children of Jerusalem, we are the children of the bride, and the bride is Jerusalem. I know this is shocking to some. How can God be married to a city? How shocking do you think it is for the wife of God, Jerusalem, our mother, to know that people think that they are the bride, that the children of God and her children believe that they are the bride. Let's call God himself to tell us who his wife or wives he was or were. God and his bride, his wife. If we look at God, Jesus had two wives, or what? And Oliba, Ezekiel, according to the prophet, Ezekiel 23, verse 2 to 4. Son of man, there were two women, daughters of one mother, and they warred in Mitzrayim, Egypt. They warred in their year. There their breasts were handled, and there their maiden nipples were squeezed. And there 
Their names were Ori, the elder, and Oriba, her sister. And they were mine. And they bore sons and daughters. So God is telling Ezekiel, I had two wives. And they bought me sons and daughters, Orua and Oriba. If we look at who is Oliha, who's the children, it's the house of Israel. And the children of Oliba is the house of Judah. They are the children. Ezekiel 35, 23, verse 5. And Oluha wrought while she was mine. And she lusted for her lovers, the neighboring Assyrians. Verse 4. And their names were Oliha, the elder, and Oliba, her sister. And they were mine, and they bore me sons and daughters. House of Israel, the northern kingdom, house of Judah, the southern kingdom. Look at the second part of that verse. Their names were Shemurim, is Oliba, and Jerusalem were Oliba. So now we can clearly see Shemurim and Jerusalem, the wives, two cities. In the Old Testament, it's confirmed God was married to Shemuran and to Jerusalem. Paul tells us the same. John saw the bride. He tells us it's Jerusalem. Old Testament, New Testament, no contradiction. God is telling us exactly who is his bride. Jeremiah 3, verse 8. And I saw that of all the causes of which backsliding Israel had committed adultery, adultery because Semurim was married to God, I had put her away and given her a certificate of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah did not fear, but went and commit warring to Isaiah 50 verse 1. Thus said Yahweh, where is the certificate of your mother's divorce, whom I have put away? Or which of my creditors is he to whom I have sold you? You were sold for your crookedness, and your mother was put away for transgression. This is about Judah. Here we can clearly see God make a distinction between the city and the children, Judah. And we are the two witnesses. From the word of God, it is clear. As it is written, so it shall be. When Jesus comes again, he will live and reign on this earth for a thousand years. We will not live in Jerusalem during this time. But if we are found worthy, we will reign with Yahshua for a thousand years from Jerusalem, from this earth. We will reign as kings and priests and not as queen. Our Father, we thank you for the opportunity and we ask that your spirit of truth, Ruach HaMes, will guide us and will reveal to us your word your truth from your scripture and that will give us a spirit of discernment father so that we can discern the lie because we will stand the lie and we ask for truth please guide us in your truth in jesus yashma's name we pray amen